Um, it is January 8th, 2015 at uh, 9.43 a.m. Um, and we're speaking in my office in Prescott and I'm speaking with... Our desk here. Okay. That should go off again. Um, before we get started, I know, um, I know you were Red Garrity, or I believe you were Red Garrity, but you weren't Red Garrity? No. Okay. Um, well that's good actually. Um, anyway, regardless of what you told, um, the Chief or Prescott Valley PD, that was something you said as a condition of employment. Um, I, did, I thought you had been Red Garrity, but regardless, I'm not, I have not been giving interviews you know, and recordings, transcripts, anything like that. I'm not using any statements you made um, to the Prescott Valley uh, Police Department. This is completely separate and fresh. Okay. Um, your Miranda warnings apply. I understand you came down voluntarily as we talked about on the phone. You are yes. not going to jail at the end of this interview unless there was some homicides I'm unaware of. <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney to assist you prior to question and be with you during question if you so desire. If you cannot afford an attorney, you have the right to have an attorney appointed for you prior to questioning. Do you understand those rights? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, if you want to just go ahead and start and kind of take me through um, anything you think I need to know about the situation and kind of what's happened. Well, I'll start um, with um, I'm an addict. Um, I had, uh, I'm in uh, treatment and recovery now. I have been for about two, two and a half years. Um, this all started in 2005. I got a work injury out to my back that um, ultimately required some extensive surgery. Um, prior to the surgery and after the surgery, I was prescribed fairly heavy doses of Percocet. Um, after that first surgery in 2005, um, it took me a little while to get off of that, but I did um, prior to returning to work. In 2010, I suffered the uh, same back injury, and that required even more extensive back surgery. And once again, back on the pain medications. Um, that back surgery did not work, and it left me in constant chronic pain. Uh, my back, my legs, my hips. Um, the doctors that did the surgery referred me to a pain management clinic and their course of treatment was more Percocet. Um, they just continued to give me different narcotic pain medications over and over and over trying to help the pain because they told me there was nothing else I could do about it. I tried laser ablation, I tried injections, I tried acupuncture, I tried massage, I tried every possible avenue for pain relief that there was and there wasn't any. Um, after um, probably about, let's see, that surgery was in December of 2010, um, somewhere in to early 2012, um, when I was seeing the pain management specialist, um, I had discussed with him that I was tired of the pain medications, um, but that I couldn't, I couldn't quit. Um, the doses they had me on were so high it was impossible to just quit. He sent me to a specialist, um, his name is Dr. Edward Gogek, um, and Dr. Gogek began treating me with Suboxone treatment, it's S-U-B-O-X-O-N-E. And Suboxone treatment is uh, a medication that helps alleviate the withdrawal symptoms from coming off of pain medications. Um, because of the doses that they had me on, I started on an extremely high dose of Suboxone treatment, and that lasted until Dr. Gogek basically closed shop, told me he was no longer going to be at, um, doing any treatments, and I needed to find somebody else. So I reached out and found um, Dr. Terry Vaughn here in Prescott, and she took over my Suboxone treatments. By the time I left Dr. Gogek, I had reduced my intake of Suboxone down to um, a very small doses, and I had been doing very well in my treatment and therapy. 
Um, Dr. Vaughn took over my case, and I've been seeing her for about a year now at least, um, with the goal of coming off completely off of Suboxone um, and ending all the treatment together. Um, and um, um, we were, I was down to like almost a negligible dose at, at um, in December, in November and December. The, because of the addiction, the cravings are constantly there, always there. Um, it was a nightmare um, at work. Um, and I think what, what was the worst thing for me was when um, one of our lieutenants retired and they assigned me to take over the Dump the Drugs program. Um, I, I was in treatment, I believed everything was going great, so I, I thought, you know what, I can handle this, it's not a big deal. Um, and we did a Dump the Drugs um, day, and um, it was extremely difficult for me being around it, but I didn't take anything. Um, over in the course of quitting the Suboxone and getting off of the Suboxone, all of the pain that I had had has all returned. I don't sleep at night. Um, I'm miserable all day long. I, I wear li prescribed lidocaine patches on my back, um, heat therapy. I have an electric TENS unit that I have to wear every, all the time when I'm at home. Um, but I was coming off the Suboxone and that it was worth it because I was done with all the other stuff. On the 30th and 31st, um, it, I hadn't slept in days. Um, I was, I was miserable. The pain was killing me. I wasn't thinking, and I screwed up. And I went in and I took on the 30th. I took, um, I believe, eight Percocet out of the bag. And the only reason I did it was I just needed to, I needed something. I thought this maybe this will help me sleep. I'm I'm good now. I've got it under control. I just need to sleep. I didn't want to go back to a doctor and start prescribing it again. Um, it was a, a dumb, stupid, stupid mistake. Um, but it, I, I wasn't thinking right. Um, I don't know why I did it. Um, I took two that night, and I I actually slept. And the next day, I didn't feel withdrawal or, or anything. Um, and so I compounded my mistake by going in the next day, and I took the bag that had the Percocet in it. Um, I took it from the room and brought it back to my office because I, I didn't want to be in, that, in the room taking medication out of the evidence room. I have access to it, but I shouldn't have been in there. Um, I, took, I removed 28. Percocet from the bag. <clears throat> I put the bag underneath my desk. I wasn't interested in anything else that was in that bag. I didn't care about any of the other stuff. It was only the Percocet that I knew was Percocet. I put them in a plastic bag and I took them home. Um, took two more that night and again I was finally able to sleep. Um, I took one on the night of the first And then on the second is when I got called in by the chief. Um, I told myself when I took them, and I knew I knew I'd made a huge mistake. And I didn't know how to fix it. Um, I, I just didn't know any resources. I, I, you know, I was stuck. But I had resigned myself that, you know, if, if it if it were found out that was it, I was done. I wasn't going to deny it. Um, I I was going to own up to it, and it, it's. And that's what I did. And so I, I requested the ability to resign so I could get away from my guests, get away from the, the department, um, the environment, and get my health and my family back. Um, they're my only concern right now is my family and my kids. Um, That night after I left, I went back to my house with Commander Edelstein and I gave him all of the rest of the pills that I had taken. I turned them back over to him. 
next day I went in to clean my office out with the intention of giving the bag to the chief, but he had already, they had already found it. So, um, and I explained to him that I didn't take anything else out of the bag other than what I just told you I took. Um, and since then, um, I've been back, I went immediately back into my counselor, um, Dr. Vaughn, I'm continuing with my therapy and my treatment. I've sought out um, a second therapist counselor that I'm going to see. I have an appointment tomorrow in the afternoon. Um, I've got referrals for a group that I can go and meet with. I've made contact with a, uh, a law enforcement related helpline for narcotic addiction and they're helping me with some referrals and resources. Um, at this point right now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just ready to do whatever I have to do to get to handle this and get it taken care of and protect my family as best I can. Obviously, you saw this in the paper this morning, which, I mean, the hardest conversation I had with my kids was having to tell them. So I knew it was coming out. And the thing that kills me the most is I thought I had made it. I thought I had made it through. I've been fighting this battle for years. Nowhere to turn. Thank you for coming in and explaining that. I thought it was important to understand what led to this in a way that I could articulate it in my report. Um, is there anything else you were planning on telling me you didn't get to there yet? Or? No, I don't think so. Okay. Just if, like I said, I just want to get this handled and uh, whatever whatever's asked of me, I'll do. Okay. I'm really hoping that it doesn't rise to the felony level. I really do, but I get it. I'll do whatever they ask. Um, one thing I, I do want to obviously ask on the record is, did you ever um, take alter or tamper with this was dump the drugs, what you've told me about so far. Did you ever tamper with, open, take any, anything um, that was packaged or in evidence no, from the Mexico Police Department? Never. Um, did you ever take any narcotic pills from a suspect or citizen? Never. As part of your duties or the police department? Never. This was it. Okay. So there was never any case where you opened, altered, or manipulated evidence items um, for any reason other than official work business and never, you never did such things in order to get narcotic drugs? No, I never did. Or any drugs? Never did. Okay. This was, this was my huge mistake. Um, I conducted a number of interviews uh, with people in the evidence area 
Mm -hmm. um, they also, Lieutenant Woods gave me a, um, I guess the key card system records. Mm -hmm. um, and from those, there were some swipes and then some statements people made that were a little concerning from earlier, a little bit earlier in the year, still in the fall. But um, one of those was I was told by a officer, uh, Luke Williams, who had been on light duty. That's referring to. Um, he told me about a time when he walked into the uh, the evidence bay, I guess you would call it, mm -hmm. um, or walked in and saw you in the evidence bay along the back counter by where a bunch of dump the drugs or you know, the prescription drugs were from the dump the yes. drugs program on the counter. Um, and he described you having your hands or, or being in a uh, like a big plastic container full of pills. Yeah, it was a box of pills. A box of pills. Can you tell me about that incident? Yes. DP, and I, I remember it, and I knew it looked bad when I was in there, but I, I didn't take anything that day. Okay. I had gone back. John well, John Riley had gone to, got sent out on a call out and was sent to a crime scene. Um, DEA or DPS, I'm not sure who picks up the drugs, had called records. Records put them through to me. They were coming to pick up the drugs. I called John. I said, they're coming to pick up the drugs. They're going to be here in like an hour. Are they ready to go? He said, um, they just need to be taped up and sealed up. I went back there, and I saw on the counter, John, I, I assume it was John, because I don't think Bob was working that day, there were tubes of like antibiotic creams, and there were other like liquid things and canisters and stuff on the counter. One of the boxes was still open, and it looked like John had been working there, taking things out of that box and putting them on the counter. I looked in the box. There were a couple of tubes sticking out of, like, creams and stuff like that. I was pulling those out, putting them on the counter. I taped the boxes shut, and I left. Was I tempted? Absolutely. It was a huge box of pills, but it's impossible to find stuff in a huge box of pills like that. I wasn't searching for anything then. I was tempted to, but I didn't. I, I literally was sealing up the boxes so that DEA could come and pick them up because John was out on a crime scene. And I'm, I'm fairly certain John can confirm that. Um, I, I, when Luke came in, I remember him saying, oh, you know, oh, oh hey, hey, sorry about that. And I'm like, no, I'm just pulling out this, this, this separating this stuff out of it. And that was it. Um, but that was the beginning of the downfall. I mean, that was the dump the drug. That was the day after the dump the drugs. And it was a, you know, it was, it was creating the battle in my mind at that point. But I didn't take anything that day. So you were checking to make sure there were no liquids in a box, and then you were taping that box shut for... I three boxes shut so that DEA could come and pick them up because John was out now, on a call out. Um, did they come and pick them, um, pick them, them up? up that day, yeah. Okay. Did, were you the one that let them in and released it to you? I think John him? came back and you John think John did? it. I'm okay. pretty sure. He, he got back before they got there. Um, but I called them on the phone and I said, hey, they want to come pick up the boxes. Uh, what do you want me to do? You want me to, to stall them? They said they're going to be here in like an hour. I said, you want me to help you? He said, well, all you need to do is tape the boxes shut. If you want to just do that, you can do that. And so I went back there, and I was taping the boxes shut. And before I taped them, like I said, on the counter, I saw all these things sitting there. And I know when I did dump the drugs the day before, mm -hmm. we separate out liquids and pills. Okay. We do that. But there are times where people bring in their own bags, and it gets mixed up. I saw a couple of things in there. I know how John works the incinerator. He's explained it to me. It's they have to separate all of the. They have to make sure there's no um, like uh, asthma things in there, canisters, stuff like that. They have to be done separately. Um, so I didn't want to tape up a box for the DEA, having them think it was all done and cleared. It looked like John was still pulling things out of the box, and I saw a couple of things in there. And so when Luke came in, I had just pulled a couple of things out, and I had tipped the box on its side and was stirring with my hand, trying to feel anything, mm -hmm. and then I taped the boxes shut.
Um, during the dump of drugs day, the day before that, did you remove any pills? No, I didn't. Okay. Was like there I ever, said, I was other than these two days, was there ever any time you removed pills from no. the dump of drugs? Or no. ate, you removed any drugs for personal no. use from there? No, okay. just those two days. Um, do you know if there's a log or anything I could ask John for? I mean, when when DA or whoever is coming and picking up this stuff, is, um, is it getting logged? Yeah, now he it's should have them? a log of it. Yeah, okay. I'll yeah, he to. logs in. I mean, yes, they have to sign for it, as my belief. Okay, so there should be a log or something. I can get a log of them picking it up that day. Okay. Um. In addition to the 30th and 31st, there's something in the NLI about the 16th. Yeah, on July, yeah, not July, I'm sorry, December 16th, mm -hmm. um, they had you on video in the vault room. And on December 16th, um, on December 16th, the swipe records, uh, where are we? Yeah, I went in on the 16th. Okay, yeah, the, the swipe records didn't show you going into the, the vault room or into evidence. Should have. Um, it's on the other evidence set of records you want to look. Yeah, so on the 16th, it only shows John Riley. Um, should have. Did you ever use your key to get into the vault room? I guess, for instance, on the, let me, see, let me make sure I have this right. I, on the 30th and the 31st, it doesn't show you swiping in either. It's very possible. So you could have used your it's key to get into possible. the vault? Yeah. Okay. Like I said, I, I, I wasn't thinking, I wasn't, it's very possible. Okay. So on the 16th, is it possible you used your key to get yeah, in? Yeah, it's very possible. Okay. Because I, 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 like I said, I, I see where you went into the vault room at lunchtime on um, December the 4th. Yeah, you, you swiped into the vault room on lunchtime on December the 4th, which was a Thursday at 12.15 in the afternoon. I don't remember what that was. Um, I was back in evidence a lot. It was part of my assignment. I went back two or three times a day. Um, I talked to those guys. I hung out back there. If somebody came in and asked, asked for John or Bob and records couldn't get a hold of them, they would call me. I'd go back looking for them. Uh, Do you know why you would have been swiping into the vault on a Thursday afternoon at 12.15? I don't. Okay. And, and when it says evidence, I mean, I'm not certain. Yeah, of this. No, I, when it says evidence vault reader, is that that is the the, the vault room, not the whole evidence office, I right? I don't know. I'm not okay. sure. I don't know. Um, so on the, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Going back to December 16th, when you were in the vault room, I um, mean, it appears you may have used your key to get in that time. Um, do you remember what you were doing in there? Yep, I was looking. Okay. I what were you again, looking at? I was looking at the at the dump the drugs. And I did not take anything that day. And I went back there thinking I was going to. And had, I wish I had more of a moment of clarity and realized this is stupid and I left. Okay. So you went back there. Do you remember if you opened the box or started to look at them or I go through them? I think I looked through. I looked like at the bags. But I you don't remember it. But you're certain you didn't take did any pills? Take, no, I did not take anything that day either. Is it possible when you left at lunch, went in on lunchtime on a Thursday, um, that it was kind of the same thing you it's went quite possible. Look. Everything from the dump the drugs day up until the 30th and 31st was mm -hmm. a, an extreme 
struggle for me. Okay, so you were you were kind of fighting this demon I the whole time. It, yeah. And it's very. I don't remember the fourth. Um, if I logged in, I did. Um, it's very possible that I looked in there. I don't remember going through any. I, I only remember looking at bags and and looking specifically for the Percocet on the 16th and then on the 30th and 31st. Um, but it's possible on the 4th the same thing happened. On a Thursday, would the dump the drugs have been in there? I th I don't know. Okay. Well, we, I mean, we, we, we have that area is where they're always, they always are. So there's always going to be some there. Okay. So even on a Thursday, if you went in a lunchtime, there would have been some in that corner. Yeah, probably some there. Yeah. Okay. Did the dump the drugs? Yeah. Well, according to the NOI, it was the 24th that Luke saw me, so it would have been the 23rd. Of which It was month? a Saturday, I think, in okay. November. Okay. So I just I wanted to get that part right. So you remember fighting it since that that, that particular dump the drugs, which would have I been had, November. Yeah, yeah. I had Saturday never been in charge of dump the drugs. I had never had anything to do with it. Um, somebody else dealt with. You know, getting the lockers, um, getting all the stuff. John dealt with the dump the drugs, and Wayne Nelson, Lieutenant Nelson, dealt with it. I had never dealt with it. It wasn't until this particular one mm -hmm. where they told me I had to take it over because Lieutenant Nelson was leaving. Okay. And my initial thought was I, I should tell somebody I can't do it. And I just thought, well, that's, everyone, that's just going to raise a bunch of red flags and questions. And so I rationalized in my head that I was fine, and I had been in treatment long enough, and I could handle this. And... I just didn't understand how vicious and how strong a hold it can get on you. I do now, talking to my therapist about the, how the pathways are created and what happens in your brain. Um, but to me, I mean, I had a 22-year career of always doing the right thing and knowing what I was doing mm -hmm. and, and being the one that can handle stuff. I mean, my wife didn't even know. I never even talked to her about the struggle. She just thought everything was going great. Okay. So when when we talked earlier, though, that you had been kind of fighting this since that particular dump of drugs, it would have been November of this year, so real recently. Yeah. yeah that was there. And in addition to those three days, including on December the 4th, there may have been times you went into the vault or were tempted or were fighting this, but yes. those... Um, other than the 30th and the 31st, were there any other times you took you know, prescription drugs no, or not. drugs of any kind? No, okay. So there may have been other times you went in and looked at it before fighting temptation, but yes. no other times when you took, took any? Yes.
So give me one sec. I just want to make sure I've covered everything. Okay. Probably need to ask about. I, I was told there was. I was told I was given a uh, 25 caliber, old 25 caliber handgun in a box of ammunition that was found in your office. Yeah, I told the chief about that. Don't make it keep it. A friend of mine gave it to me and asked me if I wanted it. Okay. It's a piece of crap. I brought it into the station with the intent of just turning it in for destruction. It, my office is a wreck. It just ended up in the bag. It's not evidence. It wasn't anything. I don't even. It was years and years ago. I don't even remember. Do you remember who the friend was or anything? Oh, God. I wish I could. It was found property, or it, it was a... F not found property. It was, I don't... It was a friend of mine that gave it to me from something. I, I don't remember what it was. I, I promise you, it's not evidence. It's not... It's not it wasn't involved in a, a it crime. It wasn't involved in anything, no. In a crime or anything. Is no, it possible... Is it possible it was something that was turned in in the lobby as found property? No, it was somebody I knew. I just can't remember. It was who somebody it was. you knew? Yeah, because they gave it to me in the same plastic bag that it was in, and they said they, they didn't want it anymore. Did I want it? And I said I don't want it, but I'll take it. And I took it back to the station, and that was it. And I think it's got to be like ten years ago, eight or ten years ago. Okay. And I've had it since then. And do you have a clear? recollection of taking it back to the station or is it possible you were given it was given to you in the lobby or in the station no it wasn't given to me at the station that, that i remember i don't have a clear recollection but I'm, i i know it's not it wasn't it wasn't anything i had to do property with i've, okay. never, done, I've never done anything like that if, if it was turned in as lost property found property stolen property or something i would have entered it in i've never done anything like that okay um it, it, this I, I i i'm not Okay. Absolutely so you, clear on the circumstances. I just remember it was given to me as, "Do you want this?" It was it was from somebody I knew, but it was a long, long time ago. Okay. Um, and it ended up just getting thrown in that box of junk underneath my desk. So you don't have a clear recollection, but you remember it was given to you by somebody you knew. It yeah. was given to you as a, "Do you want this?" And it definitely yeah. was not given to you as evidence or Absolutely. found property yeah. or anything like that. Oh, uh, definitely not. Okay. And they gave it to you with that box of Remington ammo? Yeah. I think there was like one magazine with it, maybe? Yeah, I believe so. But it was a piece of crap. I was going to try and clean it and see if it worked, but it, nothing. I never did anything with it. To make sure there's nothing else I've missed.
Um, Bob Warnke mentioned coming in on during a, his lunchtime and finding you like in the evidence area, in the vault, or out in the bay. Were any of those times when you were either tempted looking at stuff and you didn't really need to be there or anything was going on? No, not that I can remember any of that. Like I said, I went back there a lot to visit with them. Um, I went back looking for them when Records was trying to find them for somebody in the lobby that was there to pick up property. Um, well, I mean... I went back to get stuff for Records. Um, I don't remember any... Other than from that time of the dump the drugs before that, I don't ever remember going in there looking for looking for medications or looking for anything like that. Do you remember ever being in there alone, Warren Key catching you and you feeling guilty because it wasn't something work-related or something? I don't... Not that I can remember, no. Okay. So you don't remember Warren Key ever finding you in there during a time when it wasn't something well, like I, you I described where you needed to be there? I remember him coming in and, and I'm, I being in there, but I don't remember it ever being where I was doing anything wrong. Okay. I think I should, yeah, I think I need to ask. Um, are, do you, are you aware of anybody else at the Prescott Valley Police Department, including in the evidence area, who have ever taken, misused evidence or dumped the drugs, prescriptions, or anything like this? No. Okay. I hope there isn't. But you don't have any knowledge of anybody else or anything like that? No, I don't. Okay. Is there anything else I haven't asked you that you think I need to know or should know? No. I'm just that I'm incredibly sorry. Uh, I'm disgusted with myself. I'm disappointed with myself. I'm sorry I let my agency down and the community down. I'm sorry, I let my family down. Okay. Um, I think that's everything. If I realize I've, I've missed something, which I've been known to do. I'll call you, but I can't yeah, we've covered everything. Come back and talk to me I, I, I think I've covered everything we need to talk Give about. Give me an idea where it goes from here, what happens now. Um, I'm going to be writing a report on all this, getting all the interviews I've done transcribed, um, and then I'll put it together, get it with the county attorney's office. Well, obviously, Prescott Valley wanted our agency to do it, but I know the Yavapai County Attorney's Office probably is not going to want to be involved. Um, so I anticipate I'll be working with another county attorney's office. I was wondering if that was going to happen. Um, so I'll, I'll prepare a report and I'll be working with a di most likely I believe I'm going to be working with a different county attorney's office. Um, you know, and they're going to have to look at the totality of the circumstances um, and figure out what's appropriate and what kinds of things need to happen. But like, like I said, when that happens, it's going to be a long form type process. Can you um, let me know when it gets sent for review or when it's going to be done? Um, yeah, if, if I get a, a, a time frame, um, I, when I submit, I know I can let you know when it's submitted. What agency so. you're going to, what county attorney you're going to be reviewing it with? I so know where it's going. I believe it's going to be Mojave County. Mojave County? I believe that's the county I'm going to use. Um, okay. And so anyway, I'll talk to them and we'll see what's happening. Okay. I, I did talk to an attorney, um, but I told him I wanted to just, I just want to get it handled and, and do what I've got to do to get better. Okay. Um, if I, if I do have updates or, um, need to talk to you or just want to tell you, you know, which county or I've submitted it, do you want me to contact your attorney? No, you can call me with it. You I, want me to he call just you asked still? me to contact him and let him know when, when it gets sent, when it's going to be reviewed. So he, I, I just, I, 
I can't call anybody. I, okay. I don't know who to talk to, and I don't want to. I don't want to interfere. I don't want it to look like I'm trying to interfere. I don't want any of that um, stuff. So no, I all I asked him to do was be my my spokesperson to find out where it is, what's going on, and speak on my behalf um, if if need be. Um, yeah, I. Uh, I. Uh, I'll keep you updated once I submit it and everything, and we'll go from there. Um, if you don't have any questions for me, I'll go ahead and walk outside. Okay. So we're ending the interview. It is 1023 in the morning on January 8th, 2015.